Give you just a little idea how I do this. I'm not sure how everybody else does it. But I've got that whole new front piece right there. And uh, there's a hem at the bottom. I mean, it's just curled under and snapped together just to take the edge off of it and put a thick edge on there. So there's a hem on the bottom. The top on the front, I don't know if you can see it. See, we get a close up. It's just flat because it's got to sit in this Pittsburgh seam. This is going to come out and go into there. I just did this right here to make sure that it's going to do that all the way to the other side. And once I got this set, and it's only being held by the screws at the bottom, then I put the uh, under the roof, and then I ran the ratchet straps just to try to get it to lay down. And it laid down pretty good. And I let it sit overnight just to... I don't know, maybe it needs to relax, stretch out and everything. But now here on the back, I always get a little extra. So we've got quite a bit extra, really. But that's okay. That's okay on the back. So I'm going to have to draw my line and then cut this sheet, slip it into there. But now I did the same thing on uh, this side. Well, it could have been either side. I just lined it up with that side. Came over here and I ordered an extra two inches on each end. Well, on, on this end. And so I set it up there in place. I drew a line with a marker. And then I just took the tin snips and cut it even with the wall. And so it's a perfect fit. Now I got to do the same thing with the roof. I hope you can see this. Because I ordered a, about four inches extra, three, four inches extra. Because... Sometimes these just don't square up. And this one's pretty square. It's got more or less the same at the front as it does at the back. Now I've just got to get up there. I'm going to draw my line and I'm going to leave it on top of the camper. I'm going to unhook the ratchet straps and then I'll take some tin snips and I'll just carefully go all the way around. I may, I may, since I don't have the skin on the sides yet, I may just take a, a jigsaw Leave it strapped on and jigsaw it. Hey, work smarter, not harder. And don't forget to run your wires. Run your wires first. Curly says, run your wires first. So I've got those set. I went in about five and three quarters to the hole right there. Uh, so the light's going to sit right where it needs to sit. It'll start up here at the top and come down. This is towards the bottom. It's gonna be those wedding cake lights like they put on this style of camper. Remember, this is not a Shasta Compact. I'm not pretending it is. Customer just likes that shape. But look at all this new metal. I think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna make those trims on the top on the other side. And then I'm going to cut this out. That way I can install the front, make any adjustments in the back. And, and, let's see if you can see this. There's the window. Hey, I tell you, I know I complained about getting a new camera, but hey, boy, you talk about technology in four or five years. Anyway, I have to cut that out. Then I've got to cut the back window out. But it'll be set. It won't be hard. I can do the same thing with the jigsaw. So, uh, I better get working on that. Sorry about the mess. As we're finishing up here on the uh, top secret classified camper. Remember Russ, well you may not have seen this yet. Russ tore down the uh, red, white, and blue. And uh, so it's kind of sitting here so it's not outside in the rain. So what I did was I came up here and I found where I think it's pretty close and I uh, stapled it in. Now I'm taking this flat piece going up into the Pittsburgh seam. Just making sure I don't have too much. I think, I think we got a little bit too much. So I'm gonna tighten it up a little bit, recheck that. And if I have to, I'll pull those staples out, go up a quarter of an inch, but I need to check that on both sides. I'm gonna tighten this up just one more click. 
Same on the other side. So that gave me a really good idea. Woo, it's getting tight. So I'm gonna also, yeah, you can see where that's bulging out. And I'm gonna have to go up about a quarter of an inch. So what I'm gonna do is pull the staples on that seam, move it back a quarter inch after I mark it with a pencil. We should be pretty perfect at that point. Let me go do that. I did take a quarter inch up. Gotta be able to press this thing in as I staple it in. I'm not gonna put a whole bunch in, but enough to keep it there until we put our J-rail on. Now remember, everything has to be put on this for it to be 100% secure. So this front piece really isn't going to be as secure as it could be until we put the window in. And then it's gonna have about 25 screws. Why can't I? There we go. 25 screws around that small window that's going in the front. That'll really secure that top to the bottom. So we'll be good there. And then the sides, top to bottom as well. So we're gonna hit these on the side. Hey, I'm doing pretty good right there. We'll hit these on the side, on both sides, and that'll hold that where I need it. Then I think my next step is to go over and trim this off. I'm gonna check my blades on my jigsaw, and I think that's gonna be the way to go. I've checked on both sides. I've got plenty, well not plenty, but I'm good on that side. I gotta take a little off, but on this side, got plenty. So I'm gonna do that as soon as I do this. I'm trying to keep as close to the edge as I can so that I don't wrinkle it in. A little bit's gonna get covered up by the J rail. I know it's not J rail, the top rail. I'm gonna call it J rail. Once I get that J rail up there, it'll cover, it goes about an inch and a quarter in, so it covers up a lot. But if you're careful at the beginning, you don't have to worry about trimming all the trim anyway. I'm gonna tack a couple over on this side. Yeah. One of these ones from earlier giving me a little a little hassle. There we go. I'm really trying to hit where the the cross braces are. Our rafters. If I can hit that pretty good, because that's really that's really sturdy. It's that dimensional lumber. So I do my best to get that real good. And we're good. I think that just looks really, really sharp. So I could take this, if I wanted, I could take these straps off now, but I'm gonna use it, especially on this side, to keep that, because when that jigsaw gets going like that, it starts to move metal around. Uh, starts to move the metal around. We don't want that. So I'm gonna leave that on there, leave it tight. Plus I've gotta make my measurements on the back. So uh, let's get going on this uh, roof and ceiling. Now, it's not the ceiling, is it? It's the roof. It's the roof. This is at least going to be a double time, but I'm going to try to get through it. I think I've got the right blade. We'll see how it goes. And therein lies the problem. That bit did not agree with what I was doing. It's working. It's not beautiful, but it's gonna be covered up with trim. So it's, it, that's not even worth bringing it up. But I'll, uh, I'm gonna get some tin snips and another bit, another blade, and I'll finish this up and I'll show you where I'm at.
That's why I got these. These things happen. But that's okay. It's metal. We'll make it work. If we can't, we'll go get more. But that's just fine. You can kind of see if you look above me right now. But we've got everything trimmed up to a reasonable position. Reasonable position. Anything else I need to do, I can I can take my tin snips and I can clean it up. Or I can take a hammer and maybe bend it down a little bit. But uh, it's fine. It came out really good. Pretty pleased with it. It's uh, the full one. One and a quarter is going to cover everything that we've got to worry about. Then we've just got to put this on. We put that on. Then we've only got about a half inch to play with because that lip only comes over a half inch. So we've got to be very, very careful. Not that I wasn't careful here. I'm going to be extra careful on the sides. So that's that for now. I got to go do the back. It's kind of the same thing, only back there. All right, real quick. First thing I did was I already had the bottom put on with those screws because it was square. Then I hit a couple of staples. I think I went to about right there. And I did the same thing on that end because I wanted this to be able to flip out. So this was still underneath the straps. And then I hit it with some staples. And I marked where I wanted this cut with tape. I got it real close, but I was still, again, a quarter off, which I'd rather be a quarter too long than a quarter too short. So I pulled it back out. I took the tin snips, and then I just took a quarter off. And just to make my life easier, this is where the window's gonna be. It starts right here, and it starts right there. So I just made a little cut, peeled it back, and uh, that made it slip right in there. And it'll be easier to cut that way. This was easier to cut. And uh, we didn't have to worry about cutting all this, making it fit, because it's coming out anyway. So we've got a real nice fit. I'm very happy with the back, the front, and the roof. And uh, I've got a couple of staples. Just I just hit the staples on these right here. Maybe one there in the middle, because it's jumping up there. But it's not a big deal. And I've got a little trim work to do right here. That's why I always get it, a, you know, three, four inches too wide, because they're, they're rarely square. This one was more square than most for me. And uh, pretty pleased with how it's turning out. It's going to be good. Going to be good. That's what I do for the ceiling. Ceiling. I dare go again. That's what I do for the roof.